The 18th century saw some of the brightest names and faces in mathematics and physics, and her pages are sometimes overshadowed by their volumes. Here are 10 facts about the French mathematician and physicist, Emilie du Châtelet. 1. Birth and Childhood Gabrielle Emilie Tonnelet de Bretoy was born on December 17, 1706 in Paris, France. To her mother, Gabriella Anna de Frelay, and her father, Louis Nicolas Le Tonnelet de Bretoy, who was an official to King Louis XIV. Emily's father noticed her spark early on and fed her intellect by hiring tutors for her in mathematics, science, and literature. And by the time she was 12, she was fluent in German, Italian, Greek, and Latin beyond native French. As a teenager, it is said Emily used her mathematical skills to develop clever gambling strategies as a means to buy books of interest. Number two, marriage. In 1725, at just 18 years of age, Emily became du Chastelet when she married the Marquis Florent Claude du Chastelet Le Mans, an army officer who was nearly twice her age, being 34. The two would have three children, starting with their daughter, Francois Gabriel, in 1726, their first son, Louis, the following year in 1727, and their youngest son, Victor, born in 1733, who would pass away just a year after his birth. The arrangement the Chatelets agreed upon was the living of separate lives while still maintaining the one household. 3. Influence Entering the world in the midst of the Age of Enlightenment, Du Chatelet had a great deal of present influence with both the world landscape and for her personally. Isaac Newton was still alive when she was in her 20s, and his Principia was still relatively fresh in publication from 1687. She was tutored by the mathematician and philosopher de Maupertuis and Alexi Clairou, known for his theorem and equation. And she also had correspondence with the bright Swift mathematician Leonard Euler, as well as Johann Bernoulli II of the famous mathematical Bernoulli family and Du Chatelet's most serious and intense influence would be that of 4. Voltaire. When she was about 23 years old, Chatelet met the philosopher and playwright Francois-Marie Arouet, better known by his literary name, Voltaire, though the two would start a more serious relationship four years later in 1733. Du Chatelet offered refuge for Voltaire at her chateau in Syrie, when he came under fire for publishing his Letters Concerning the English Nation, which flattered England at the expense in comparison of France, disparaging the French monarchy's lack of human rights. Du Chatelet and Voltaire would be in relationship both romantic and intellectual for the next 16 years, conducting research and scientific experiments, particularly in optics, at Siri with Voltaire giving Du Chatelet co-authorship for his 1938 Elements of the Philosophy of Newton. Voltaire spoke of Du Chatelet's mathematical skills, saying, I saw her one day divide a nine-figure number by nine other figures in her head without any help, in the presence of a geometer unable to keep up with her. And in a letter to King Frederick II of Prussia, Voltaire described Du Chatelet as a great man whose only fault was being a woman. Number five, her library. Du Chatelet amassed an impressive number of books for her personal library at the Chateau de Siri with Voltaire. The collection consisted of roughly 21,000 books, a very significant number which was larger than most universities at that time of the 18th century. Number six, a hint of infrared. In 1738, both Du Châtelet and Voltaire entered the Grand Prix contest held by the Academy of Sciences in Paris on the investigation of the nature of fire. Though the prize would be won by Euler, Du Châtelet was given an honorable mention and her paper was published in 1744, making her the first woman ever to be published by the Academy. Within the contents of her paper titled Dissertation on the Nature and Propagation of Fire, Du Chatelet's observation that bodies ignite more or less quickly according to their color suggests a distinction in heating power among different colors, 
anticipating the concept of infrared radiation, which is now known as invisible radiant energy with longer wavelengths than visible light and capable of heating objects. Number seven, conservation of energy. Inspired by an experiment of Willem S. Gravisonda, Du Chatelet conducted an experiment dropping heavy lead balls into clay. She found that as the velocity of the balls increased, the depth of penetration into the clay also increased, yet exponentially. For instance, if the balls were dropped at twice the speed, they would go four times as deep. Or, at three times the speed, then nine times as deep, suggesting energy is proportional to the velocity squared contrasting Newton's belief in a more linear relationship of mass times velocity. Number 8. Foundations of Physics In 1740, Du Chatelet anonymously published Institutions de Physique, or Foundations of Physics, originally intended as a textbook for her then 13-year-old son Louis. Foundations of Physics is a comprehensive treatise that covers various aspects of physics, including mechanics, energy, and the nature of matter. In this work, Du Chatelet aimed to provide a clear and accessible presentation of the known physics of her time, making it understandable to a wider audience. She also introduced her own insights and interpretations of living force and inertia, and it demonstrated her abilities of mathematics and geometry. At the time, France was heavily steeped in Cartesianism, and Foundations of Physics was a way for Du Chatelet to introduce Newtonian physics to the greater French populace. Foundations was well-received and widely distributed within a few years and translated into several languages. Number 9. The Principia In 1749, Du Chatelet worked vigorously, even while fully to term with her fourth child, on a Latin to French translation of Isaac Newton's Principia Mathematica. It is considered Emily's greatest work, as it was not simply a French translation of Newton's Principia, but also comprised a large portion of commentary that pulled from her proficiency of calculus, analytical geometry, and experimental work. Her translation still stands as the solitary French authority of Newtonian mechanics to this very day. Number 10. Death Too Soon In 1748, Du Chatelet began a relationship with the French poet and philosopher Jean-Francois de Saint-Lambert and became pregnant with her fourth child. She would share with a friend in a letter her fears of not living out the pregnancy, being now in her forties. Sadly, the premonition would come true, and on September 10, 1749, being only 42 years of age, Du Chatelet would pass away just six days after giving birth to a daughter, Stanislas Adelaide. Emily's Principis Mathematiques de la Philosophie Naturelle would be published a decade later in 1759. And we thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This video is just a small peek at the life of Du Chatelet, and inside the description there are links to deeper insights into Emily's life and works.